some familiar names in the room. Um, we'll just get started in another minute or so. Awesome. Looks like we have critical mass, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. My name is Lynn Yang. I am an associate director of college counseling at Brooklyn Friends School. Um, and on behalf of all the schools, we are so excited to have some wonderful alumni um, join us today to talk about their experiences with being at a public university. So with that, I am going to turn it over to our panelists to um, introduce themselves and just share their names, um, the schools that they're affiliated with and what they're studying. Um, Fenora, would you mind getting us started? Of course. My name is Fenora, um, and I use she, her pronouns. I graduated from Berkeley Carroll in June, and I'm currently at UCLA, um, and I'm currently also undeclared, but I think I'm going to double major in communications and public affairs. Ruby, will you introduce yourself next? Hi, I'm Ruby. Um, I graduated from Berkeley Carroll in 2022. So I'm a sophomore in, at um, CU Boulder now. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And I'm studying environmental science and I'm thinking about a minor in political science. Thank you. Ian, you're next on my screen, so. <laughs> yeah, hi, uh, I'm Ian. Um, I go by he, him, and I went to Packer Collegiate. I graduated in 2017 and then went to Penn State University. I uh, graduated in 2021, and I had majored in uh, meteorology risk management, and now I'm working at Moody's RMS uh, in Hoboken, New Jersey. Awesome. Thanks, Ian. And then next, um, Alex, you are up. <laughs> mm. I'm Alex. Um, I'm a sophomore at the University of Michigan. Uh, I went to Brooklyn Friends for high school, and I'm studying uh, economics and information analysis and hoping to minor in business. And last but not least. Hi, I'm Madison or Maddie. Um, I use sheer pronouns. I graduated also from Brooklyn Friends School in 2022. And I currently go to the University of Wisconsin Madison, and I'm made double majoring in dance and communications currently, and minoring in sports communications and athletic healthcare. Yeah, thank you so much, you all, for joining us. Um, I know that you're taking time out of your busy schedules to come chat with us, but I know for a lot of students, right, going from a small Brooklyn independent school where you know everyone in your class. Um, to going to a school that's like literally hundreds of times bigger is a big change. So I really appreciate you all taking the time to chat with our students and families about your experiences. Um, so we have some prepared questions that we'll go through and then I'll turn it over to the audience for a Q&A. Um, if you're in the audience and you have a question, please just use the Q&A feature and when we're ready for questions, we'll just go through them. Um, and panelists, please feel free to jump in. Um, you can answer in any order. So. First, I'll ask you to kind of rewind the clock right back, you know, a year for some of you, many years for others of you. But can you think back to when you were making your college decision and talk a little about what drew you to your current institution? Yeah, I can get started on that. I think for me, I was a bit of a unique case um, since I really had known going into the college process what I wanted to major in. Um, I've been, you know, meteorology has been a passion of mine since I was five or six years old. Um, so, you know, sophomore, junior year, when we were, you know, supposed to start putting our list together for for colleges that we were interested in, I already knew what major I wanted. And, you know, meteorology is a very niche field. I think there's really not that many, um, you know, colleges that have a meteorology department. Um, so I had a really short list of colleges that I was looking at. Um, and, you know, I think all of them were public universities. And I think for me, kind of the things that I was looking at was staying somewhat closer to home. I know kind of with meteorology, kind of the top two programs usually are, um, you know, Penn State and University of Oklahoma. 
And I always thought I had visited University of Oklahoma and it just seemed too far. And culturally, it was, you know, fairly different from, you know, growing up in you know the New York, New Jersey area. Um, so I kind of gravitated towards Penn State more. And I think given that Penn State also had somewhat of a larger program, I think the my graduating class was about 50 uh, people in meteorology, whereas some of the other programs were maybe five to 10 people. Um, I did like having, you know, access to more resources, um, more renowned professors, um, and just kind of a, a larger campus as a whole. So I think, you know, that was kind of the, the key things I was looking at. I also, at the end, um, I did have another student, one of my close friends, um, from Packer who did end up going to Penn State too. And I think that also helped in my decision, just, you know, having someone that I knew and that I could go to, to Penn State with, even though, you know, it's such a large school. Um, and so, you know, with that in mind, that's kind of what drove my decision to, to go to Penn State. I can jump in next. Um, I definitely did not expect to go to Boulder it seemed super far away. And I think there's definitely a kind of East Coast to an East Coast school pipeline, particularly from New York. I just feel like everyone stays on the East Coast, even though it's not true. But Boulder felt super far to me. And it honestly wasn't really in my like idea of where I wanted to go, just because I think coming from a small private school like Berkeley Carroll or any of the other schools um, on this panel, it's it seems pretty competitive to you. Everyone wants to go to a kind of selective school. And like there are schools that almost everyone applies to and no one really applied to Boulder. So it felt a little out there, but I came and I visited and I was really drawn to the nature aspect of it here. Um, I also am an environmental science major and they're pretty solid in that. They have a lot of field work and like hands-on academics out here, which I love. Um, and it just, it definitely wasn't something that I had thought of originally when I started my college process, but by the end of it, it was definitely the right choice. I can jump in now. Um, so I was very undecided on everything. I applied to tiny like liberal arts colleges on the East Coast as well. And I also applied to big schools in California. And I kind of kept my whole college process a secret from everyone but secretly I wanted to go to UCLA um and I knew I wanted to live in California I knew I was ready for like a bigger school after attending such small New York City private schools my whole life um and I also knew that UCLA had a lot of like opportunities to explore because on my tour they said that the most like um popular major coming in was undecided and so I wanted to take the first year to kind of check out a lot of different things and see what I'm interested in before choosing a major and choosing a path um so I knew that and then the day I got into UCLA I actually found the notebook I'd taken on tours of colleges and the whole page was just filled with the word love in all caps so I knew that like deep down it was the right decision um and it's turned out to be amazing and I'm very very happy here Um, yeah, so I had a unique situation too. So I went to Brooklyn Friends um, for 16 years and coming from such a small school, I knew I was ready for um, a big school. Like I wanted, I knew the entire college process. I wanted to come to a much bigger school. Um, and then I had, I had, I was lucky to have my brother here who's two years older, who's a senior now. And being able to visit him when I was a senior in high school kind of like made the decision for me just being here with my brother and and um just being introduced introduced to everything around me um and I visited a bunch of other bigger schools too that I enjoyed but the atmosphere in Michigan just like felt different to me just how um prideful everyone was and anywhere you go just wearing like a Michigan hoodie and hearing like go blue was something that I thought that I would like and wanted to be a part of so it kind of made the decision for me after coming to visit uh, my senior year of high school. I guess I'll finish this question off too. Um, so I have always known that I wanted to go to a big state school because majority of my family went to Penn State. So I grew up just being like, that's what I want in my college. And as I got older, I started realizing like, I don't necessarily want to go to Penn State specifically, not because I didn't like the school. I love the school. I visited it so visited it so many times. 
it was just the fact that I still love New York City so much and the aspect of it being a city and I didn't want to leave a city necessarily. And so as I was doing my college search, I realized that Wisconsin not just had the majors that I wanted, but it was also a city college. Obviously not the same as New York City because they're completely different, but I just knew that once I saw, once I came to visit Wisconsin and saw that it was such a city, but still very much a college campus, I knew that that's what I wanted. And I'm also very big on sports and I needed a big sports school as well. So this just, Wisconsin just checked all the boxes for me. Thanks y'all. I love how different each of your stories are, right? Like Ian, you knew exactly what you wanted to do. And Fenora, you went in because you wanted to be undecided, right? And some, for some of you, it was like much more about academics. For some of you, it was about kind of the whole package. So I love that. Um, so if you take yourself back to now, like, you know, the first couple of weeks or months of being on campus, right? And you're transitioning to your new environment. What were some of the resources, people, or experiences that helped you kind of get the hang of being a college student at your current campus? Um, I think for me, I like when you're a freshman, especially in a on a big campus, like a public university, usually pretty large, they really try and incorporate like freshman bonding and all of that and kind of getting to know your peers. And so I think there was a lot of activities that Boulder set up um, that I just attended. My roommate and I, thankfully, we worked out as a pair and we're friends. And so we kind of went and did a lot of these things together. But there was just like the club fair and there was like pizza on the lawn, meet like your whole mates and all that kind of stuff. And I think just like saying yes to those things, even if they sound maybe a little like, I don't really want to go and small talk with all these people, but it, it eventually does help you in the long run because there just creates more familiar faces. And I think at a big school, it's nice, even if you don't really know a person, but just like, like, oh, I saw you at that. And that's how we have a connection. But just when you create those connections, the public university is particularly, I mean, specifically for me, it feels a lot smaller. I don't even feel like I go to a big school. <laughs> like I see people every time I leave my house, but um, yeah. Yeah, I completely agree with that. I know the first week, just trying to go to as many events as I could. I think there were different sporting events that they were holding for, for freshmen where everyone was just, everyone there were freshmen and just mingling with everyone. And just, even if there was someone that you met and you talked to and maybe you didn't have a great connection with them, you know, they probably have other people who they've met or, you know, they're just trying to make friends with, um, you know, the first week that you can also meet as well. Um, and I think another good experience for me, I think in the July before I started um, and moved in, we had a new student, new student orientation where for, I think it was two nights, uh, we stayed at Penn State and we had a roommate. Uh, we kind of went through the process of what a day would look like. Uh, for a student, I think that was a good way to get acclimated to kind of what to expect when moving in. Um, even though it was only two days, I thought it was really helpful. Um, and it was also a good way to to get to know people before um, starting and moving in, because then, you know, you can send them a text, the people you met the, the month prior, um, you know, meet up with them, something like that. Uh, so I think that was really beneficial as well. Yeah. Um... When I got there, I moved into my dorm right away, and my dorm was a thousand freshmen. So just walking in the hallways, and everyone's very friendly um, right away. And then there was a football game actually the like the within a week of everyone getting there and going to the tailgates with everyone um, before the game, and everyone just excited for their first uh, football game at the university. Um, kind of bonded people together, and within the first week, I've probably met like a hundred freshmen that I would already be able to like talk to if I saw them on the street. And then as you continue on, you meet people in your class um, when classes start and you start to get your, I'd like, I had a very different group my first couple of weeks than I do now, but um, I still love those kids that I were, that I was hanging out with and still get lunch and dinner with them here and there. So it's really easy to um, when you go to such a big school, just to introduce yourself to a bunch of people right away.
Um, I wanted to also touch on orientation. So I knew I think only two people coming into a class of 8,000 is my grade right now. Um, and so I attended orientation and it was really beneficial. I met so many people, a lot of whom I'm still very close with. And I think the first week of school, we just kept getting dinner, meeting up and introducing each other to all of the other people we'd been meeting. And so I think that that was a really cool way to make friends. I'm also living on campus in the dorm and my building's really, really social. We are in classic triples because they have like a lot of students living on campus, obviously. But I think it's really cool because everyone on my floor, I remember I moved in and a bunch of people just came and knocked on the door and were super friendly and asked us to get dinner. Um, I also went with random roommates, which worked out so well for me. I'm very close with both of them. And I think that it was a great way because we could all like meet different people and kind of bring them back and just it was a really special time, I think, because everyone was so nervous, but also so excited to be here and to meet new people and make friends. And I agree, like also attending events on campus, like Ruby said, and all of these things and classes help too. So there are so many different ways that make it feel a lot smaller. And I think also living on campus does help me see the same people every day. And it feels like a real community. Um, For me personally, I think that what helped me the most in the beginning was the fact that I had, I don't want to call it a hobby because dance, I don't really consider dance a hobby for myself. I consider it more, but I found most of my friends just through dance. And so I feel like if I were to give advice to anyone, finding people through the things you're really passionate about or just love is like one of the best ways you can do it because I like for me I had a orientation for the dance department in the beginning and just being able to bond over that common interest made us our connection so much stronger and I became friends with people so quickly and then another thing that was more unique for my school I ended up moving into a dorm that was mainly like New York New Jersey Connecticut Philly kids so we all just migrated to that one building and so we all had something co to connect with or connect over so that also helped a lot I'm noticing that so many of you spoke about like friendships and building relationships so I'm going to go off script a little bit but I'm just so curious right like when you go from knowing the same people right in your high school community and Alex like some of your friends you probably knew for 16 years like how do you feel like you've been able to build deep relationships in your new college context? Yeah, um, so that was something I was worried about coming in just because I've had friends um, since I was one or two years old and I've been my same friends um, from home. But um, I ended up joining a fraternity that my brother was in and um, being able to like get a smaller group of 30 guys um, right when I joined campus, like it cut down everything from like what everyone says, like a 10,000 person freshman class to uh, 30 guys that you that you really spend your entire first semester with, or not your entire, but most of your time outside of class, I was able to spend with these guys and um, just bonding with them um, over the first semester. And now I live in a house of um, 40 guys and 30 of them um, was were uh, with me uh, my first semester. So that was that was how I created a smaller community for myself. I um I was in a similar situation. I went to Berkeley Carroll my whole life and leaving that environment, very safe, felt very secure environment of like 78 people was super scary, especially coming to such a large school. Um, and I only one one kid from my grade um came to Boulder with me, but we were placed on like opposite sides of campus. I never saw him. So it I really felt like I was kind of out here alone. But I really found a lot of um like friendship and bonding in my dorm. I, most of my best friends are still from my hall. Um, I don't know if I just got lucky with that, but I think it's also just about the effort because majority of the people who you will go to school with and who I go to school with, I think are pretty solid people. Um, I also, similar to Alex, I joined a sorority, but this was later, I did this this year. And I felt like it just opened up like an entire new group of people to me that I 
maybe never would have expected being a part of, but um, it's just a really great way to meet people. And even if you don't go through with like being in a sorority or being in a fraternity, whatever you may choose to do, um, just the process of having to talk to people, like literally being forced to talk to people to go through it was good. It just, it opens up new connections and kind of forces you to talk to people who maybe you thought you wouldn't originally. Since- yeah, I think Oh, sorry, sorry. You, you go. <laughs> okay, I'll go, I'll make it quick. Um, So since uh Alex and Ruby just brought up fraternity and soror fraternities and sororities, I just wanted to touch on that quickly because I came into college like thinking being in a sorority is the only way I'm going to make friends. And as I was going through the process, I realized because of all the things that I was balancing, I couldn't be in a sorority and I didn't have the time. And that made me super concerned that I just wouldn't have any friends in college. But then I realized that there are so many other ways to create friendships in college. And that's not everything. And I feel like especially at big universities, that's something that everyone looks for right away. At least I know that's true for people that I know. Um, they just want to go straight to the sororities and making th friends through that. And while that's great. And I think it's great. To, like, I personally thought it was great, too. There, It's just not the only way to make friends. And, like, again, I made my friends through um, bonding over something that we both love. So I just feel like that's important as well for people going into a big university to know. Yeah, going off of that, I also didn't join a fraternity. Um, and I think I really didn't have any troubles, you know, meeting people, connecting and you know, making friends that I'm still in constant contact today, even though I graduated three years ago. Um, I think just for me, the the meteorology program was so small. Um, it, you know, it felt like, you know, a smaller school within such a large school. And it was nice to be able to connect with people there, make friends um, through that. And then also, I think I, I mentioned earlier, uh, one of my closest friends in high school, he went to Penn State as well. Um, so just being able to meet people through him, you know, his roommate, people who lived in his dorm and vice versa with him meeting um, people in my dorm and some of the friends that I had made as well. Um, so I think it's, you know, there's so many different events. There's so many different ways to meet people, um, you know, at Penn State and at some of these, you know, larger public schools. Um, I think no matter which kind of pathway you go down, whether it's a fraternity, sorority or not, um, you know, I think it's still really easy to be able to, to find people who have um, common interests with you and, you know, just become friends with them. So. I also want to say, like, I currently feel so grateful for all of the relationships I've made in college and all of the friends I've made. I didn't want to rush this year, and a lot of my friends did rush sororities. Some of them are in them, some of them dropped out, and I think that that was, is really, can be really beneficial way to make friends, but I also think if you live on campus and if you're doing clubs and activities and taking classes you're really interested in, you're going to meet so many cool people that way, and you're going to also like I think just living all together on a college campus in the same environment is a really good way to be close to people and make friends especially since it's most people's first time living away from home it's a really nice way to bond and like make really strong relationships and I think all of the people I've met the ones who are in Greek life the ones who aren't are all so solid and so motivated and so I think I'm just very grateful for all of those relationships and all the different types of people there are so I think that it can feel really scary going to such a big school because you don't know who you're going to be hanging out with you don't know what your life is going to look like but I think that it's such a beneficial way to kind of environment to throw yourself into because you're going to have such solid relationships coming out of that I love that and I'm definitely hearing a theme of like you know everybody else is looking for the same thing right so it's like as long as you put yourself out there you'll make connections um, transitioning a little bit more to the academic side, I'd love to hear about your experiences in the classroom. Um, I think there's a question of, you know, how was it, right, going from such small classes in high school, I know some classes at BFS are just a couple of students, um, to going to a big class. So I'm curious, can you all share the biggest class you've taken and talk about how it felt and like how did you get the most out of being in a bigger class? Yeah, I think for me, my biggest class was probably freshman year. And I think there were multiple, especially first semester. Some of the, the, you know, the initial classes you're taking, I think my chemistry class was maybe 400 people. 
Um, and I think, you know, I think it was the same for physics as well. But for me, I think knowing people in the class was really helpful, just being able to, you know, sit with them and kind of talk things over, working on homework, um, things like that. And then also making use of office hours. Um, I know for some of the larger classes, you're, it's really hard to interact with a teacher. If you have a question, I guess you're, the person you're asking might be a TA who's sitting close by or walking up the aisles. Um, so it's kind of really, it's kind of hard to ask a question that you have. Um, but there are office hours where, you know, the, the professor will put a, put time on, you know, the calendar of the week where you can go into the, their office and kind of ask them questions, go over maybe homework problems. Um, and there will also be TAs there where you can talk to them as well. Um, so I think making use of that. Um, and I think for me, especially freshman year, um, you know, don't be afraid to use external resources as well. As I know YouTube was really helpful. Some of the, uh, like the chemistry and physics uh, YouTube videos, uh, just using them and um, trying to get as much out of it as possible. I think there's definitely a lot of different resources, um, you know, student tutoring as well um, is another thing. I think my, my junior year was using um, tutoring for math. Um, so I think there's just a, really a plethora of resources on campus um, and off campus as well that, you know, is available to all the students. Yeah, I have a similar, um, my largest class size has probably been about 400 students. Um, and that was mostly freshman year, a little bit this year too, but it's kind of just like the intro level classes that I feel have to be that large. And then as you kind of get more specific with what you want to study, it narrows down throughout the years. Um, but I, I think a lot of schools do this, but Boulder has a system set up where you have like two big lectures a week and then you have a smaller we call it a recitation. Some they call it different things, but it's just a smaller group taught by a TA, about like 15 people. Um, and so you kind of meet friends in that and that's where you're able to like ask questions and stuff like that. But then you see those friends in lecture and you like feels a little smaller through that. Um, but I was definitely intimidated by the large class size. I was very comfortable walking into my tiny classroom at Brigby Carroll, knowing everyone and all of that. Um, and then it's a big shift walking into a huge auditorium filled with no one you know. But I think it gets more comfortable. And honestly, I learned to really like it because you can just kind of sit there and like absorb all the material. And it feels like kind of a more relaxed way to teach for me personally, maybe not other people. But um, I've definitely had to embrace the student tutoring this semester as I've taken harder math classes. Um, so that's also it's a great resource I think they understand that their classes are large and pretty challenging sometimes. So, and students have taken these classes. So there are really great resources out there. I think, okay, so the biggest class I've taken so far, I think is about 450 people. And I think that the smallest class is around like nine or 10. And also all of the larger lectures that I have had at UCLA have smaller discussion sections that are about 20 to 30 people-ish, and those have a TA. Um, but I also think that Berkeley Carroll prepared me really well to succeed in the big classes because I feel confident and comfortable reaching out to professors and staying after class to ask a question or something. And in my experience, they've all been really receptive and really excited to talk to me and my friends after classes um, or during office hours. So I think that even though it's a big class and a really big lecture, it can feel smaller and feel like personal still as long as you're putting yourself out there um and I also think there are certain programs like I'm in one called the college scholars program which has like smaller and more personalized classes and like academic advising help and stuff so I think that if your school offers those and you want a more personalized experience it's definitely worth it to apply um Ruby actually gave me this advice last year before I like made a college decision and it was really helpful um and I do think it's a little bit of a trial and error for like how to learn best in big lectures. Cause again, I was really used to small classes where it's more discussion based, but I think that it's a lot of trial and error, but eventually it works and it clicks and it's a really cool way. It's like a different way of learning. And I have been really enjoying the big classes. Um, So I had a interesting experience with uh, my classes because I started off as a dance major and only 20 people are in my cohort as a dance major so I had very small classes going into college so I was like oh this is so nice it's just like high school 
And then I had to get into like my gen eds and then my other major and my two minors. And I was like, wait, okay, now I have to take these big classes. So the transition from being in a 20 person class to like a 200 person class was pretty scary. And I had never done it before. And I wasn't, I didn't know what to expect. And I think the scariest part was, I feel like I remember in high school people being like, in college, you're not going to get to talk to your teachers. They're just going to teach and you have to figure it out, which is not the case, at least at my school. I don't think it is at most other schools either. There are still so many ways to connect with the teachers or the professors. Even like I'm able to email my professors and they get back to me, even if it's a big class and you could reach out to your TAs. I'm sure every school has advisors like within your school like if you're in the school of I don't know com I don't know education for example um they have like their own set advisors that you could speak to so that was just really helpful knowing that like I had resources before going into these big classes yeah similar to everyone else I had like a 500 person um lecture last year um, for some of the intro classes. And like everyone said, it's very different than going to such a small high school. Um, but like Ruby said, um, we have 20 minute, I mean, we have 20 person uh, discussion sections is what we call them every week, which is like for each class you have um, with a, like a graduate student teaches you and like goes over the material that we've learned, which has been very helpful because it feels exactly like the environment I had at Brooklyn Friends. Um, but one thing that is important that's different, um, that I had to like recognize early on is that no one's like, they don't take attendance usually at like a 500 person lecture. So it's on you to make it to class. And if you don't make it to class and you miss the material, it's also on you to follow up with the teacher and, um, learn it yourself. Like no one's going to, like when I missed class at Brooklyn Friends, I would get like three emails, like catching me up and everything, but it doesn't work like that anymore. Um. So just knowing yourself and making sure that you make it to your, all of your classes. Yeah, thanks all. And some of you started talking about like resources like tutoring, um, and I'm curious about other academic resources like, you know, help with course registration or like academic advising um, or academic support. Like how have you navigated and used these resources at your school and how does it compare to your experiences in high school? I think, yeah, I think uh, for me, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. sorry. Yeah, I think for me, you know, being that I was in a pretty small department, I think I mentioned my graduating class for meteorology was about 45, 50 kids. Uh, I think it was fairly similar to maybe some of the advising at Packer, um, just because a lot of the advisors that were available, um, they really didn't have many students that they were, you know, advising. So maybe they'd only have a, a handful at most. Um, so it really did feel like they had a lot of time for you. And if I had any questions, I can email them. I can go into their office really whenever, um, you know, the door would usually be open. I could just walk in and sit down with them, ask any questions. And I think that was one of the really valuable things during my time at Penn State. Um, I know there were a lot of times where, you know, scheduling can be fairly difficult, especially early on when you're not used to, um, you know, the process of scheduling all your classes and just being able to go to them and having them kind of walk you through some of the classes that you need, you know, all the different options that you have semester by semester and putting together like an academic plan, um, I think was really helpful. And, you know, I, I'm not sure how other departments, um, how they would do it, I guess, for maybe the larger ones. Um, but I know for mine, given that it was so small, it really felt like um, we could go in and get help whenever we needed, which was, you know, really, really great during my time there. Yeah, I definitely am. Um similarly utilized my academic advisor a lot I think probably more than the average person just because I was super like anxious about leaving Berkeley Carroll and having my set curriculum and all that done for me to go into choosing my own classes and needing to make sure that I get all my credits and do my degree requirements to graduate on time because if, if you don't have that in line like you just won't graduate in time and you'll have a fifth year. And like, I, I just, that didn't occur to me that that could happen. Like no one is actually really looking out for you too much. It's really up to your own initiative. But when you go to those resources, they're definitely there. Like my academic advisor 
will sit with me and I'll just be able to be like, so I can take this and like that will fit everything. And we just look through everything together. And I think that's been great. Um, and just kind of going back to what Flora said, I forgot what I had told her, but I think it's really useful. Um, I like found an honors program at CU and just applied into it. And I don't think it's too competitive to get into, um, but it definitely makes the class sizes smaller. And then they also have their own resources. They have like an honors academic advisor and they teach their own classes that are smaller class sizes. And so I think it is really useful to look for programs like that if you're interested in that, um, because I get like different opportunities from them. They send me emails about like research internships and fellowships and stuff like that, that um, I think also just really adds to the academic experience here. I think in my experience, the like academic advising is a lot less personal than it was at Berkeley Carroll, which is to be expected because when you're going from a school of like 70 to a school of 30,000, like that is quite a big change. But I think that they have always responded within 24 hours and like set up an appointment within the, I think, five business days. Um, and they're very helpful in like planning out your classes, showing you what you need to take for GEs and also for majors. I think I am a unique case because I'm undecided. So I won't have like a course plan or like a graduation plan until I declare a major, which will hopefully be the end of this year or the beginning of next year. But I think that they are very helpful and they're very straightforward about like all of the requirements and everything that you'll need um, to do take each quarter in order to graduate on time. So. Um, at my school, um, I touched on this before, but the, the advisors at my school are great and they were such an amazing help when it came to just like starting out in the first place at school um, and navigating my way through. Um, and then also something else I want to mention is I can't say, I mean, I don't know about other schools, but I know from my school, the learning disability challenges center at my school is amazing and they get back to you so quickly they tell you every step that you need to take to like tell teachers your accommodations and everything and I feel like that was something I was also a little nervous about because when you go to a private school that's so hands-on and they were so on top of making sure that you had all the accommodations set for you and you didn't have to do as much work I was worried because I didn't even know like how to even get started and they just make it so simple for you and all you have to do is just like click a few buttons and that's it and I feel like that's important for people to know or people who have learning challenges um to know because it is something that is really scary but super helpful and helped me a lot with my classes and everything yeah I also um applied out of high school into the honors program, which um, helped me a lot just because my advisor has been very hands-on and like I email her all the time and she gets back to me with like a list of classes and even um, gets me into some of the classes that are closed just from her being connected with some of the professors, which is really nice. Um, but I also was lucky because when I, over the summer before I came to school um, for freshman year, my brother really helped me out like planning my schedule and showing me all the different resources I could use, which is surprising that you just never get those resources unless someone shows you them. Um, so that was very helpful going into school. Um, but then as you pick up on it after first semester, you realize that like um, you constantly looking at like your course audit to make sure that you you're filling your requirements and signing up for the classes that will help you with your major. Um, so you really do have to do a lot of work by yourself, but just uh, making sure you're on track for whatever uh, classes you need. I love that. Alex, if we have any U Michigan um, bound students from BFS, I'm definitely gonna send them your way so you can pass on all those hot tips. Um, definitely. Ruby, you spoke a little bit about like internship preparation. I'm really curious to hear from all of you, right? So how has your school helped you in terms of like career preparation, like finding internships or in Ian's case, finding postgraduate work? Um, I mean, I can say that I wasn't really looking for an internship last year. I was just like on my computer and I got an email from the honors program here, just 
they just like send you emails with all of these opportunities on campus. And usually I let them just like kind of slip out from my eye, but it said paid internship. And I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. Um, and I looked into it and it was just like, CU has a program where they pair students looking to do research with professors looking to conduct a study. Um, and so it's a mutually beneficial situation, but you get paid. Um, and so I applied into it and I got paired with a professor who's conducting research on climate migration um, and she got funded from the NHS. And so it's like, it's been really interesting to see how research operates on that level and how like just working through it and kind of planning the study. And I just didn't realize how much work goes into it, but I've been able to get involved through that, which has been really great. It's nice to have an academic um, interest that isn't school, that, that aren't my classes. It definitely adds to my workload. And at some points I regret it when I have like way too much homework and I don't want to do that. Um, but overall it's been great and it's been really useful for just getting other things because I was able to get a fellowship because of this one professor that I'm working with. So I think looking for those opportunities like internships, fellowships, just undergraduate research positions, especially if you're in STEM, um, helps you to connect to other professors who are conducting new things and like always because universities big universities are always looking for student help like I think there's an entire page from CU that's just like begging for students to come help them with their research because there are so many professors who are doing that on top of their um, teaching so there definitely is always opportunity for it as long as you look for it yeah, I think my department did a really good job of just constantly sending out emails and also having a dedicated website that constantly just posted internship opportunities, job opportunities for, um, you know, upperclassmen as, and, you know, seniors to looking to, to go into the workforce. Um, I also, my junior year, I took a professional development class and they would, every week they would bring in um, different representatives and different alumni from companies, um, you know, that you know, were, were related to weather meteorology and they would come in and speak to us and that was a good way to you know begin networking and kind of open our eyes to what some of the opportunities post-grad were like um, and I know for me it was a little bit tough given that uh, my junior year was the COVID year um, so it was tough finding an internship um, I did for fortunately find one and I was able to work uh, remotely during the summer and also throughout the entirety of my senior year um, with the National Weather Service um, in D.C. And I guess that was one of the positives, just being able to do that completely remote and being able to do that alongside um, my coursework. Um, and that eventually led to me getting a full time position in the weather service where I was you know, living in D.C. for two years um, and then, you know, switched over the summer to closer to home here in uh, New Jersey. Um, but I think in terms of, you know, Penn State and my department as a whole, I think they did a really good job as well, just, you know, constantly providing us with information and opportunities that uh, we could take advantage of. Um, similarly to both Ruby and Ian, um, so again, I double major. And so for the communication school, they send out lists upon lists of different internship opportunities, job opportunities, even just like volunteering opportunities as well. Um, and they are so helpful because I found like, some things that I'm I'm not going to be doing them this summer, but things that I'm looking forward to doing next summer that relate to sports and communications and everything. And it's super exciting. And then for dance, um, they send out a lot of internship um lists as well. But the biggest thing with their department is you just find so many connections within like the dance department and the dance world with like the students and the teachers, like I ended up finding a dance team through a friend and then through another friend, I learned about auditioning for an NBA dance team and now I'm on the NBA dance team. So like, it's just the, these connections that you make, you would never expect to find at like a school like Wisconsin. I would never know that like, I'd find such an amazing connection in the state of Wisconsin and I did. And now amazing things are happening. So yeah, just like through the school giving things, but also like connections through friends and teachers and everything. Yeah, um, 
I was able to find uh, most of my internships and uh, through and job opportunities through clubs. And I was able to join um, two business clubs, which got me interested in finance. And now I'm currently going through the recruiting process for investment banking. Um, and the school is just has always taught net like the importance of networking and networking within the alumni community. So learning skills through these clubs um, and technical prep. And now at this time, like it's starting to ramp up a bit and we have networking events almost every night and sometimes two or three times a day um, where, you know, you put on your suit and you go and you um, meet all these alumni that come back from different banks um, to talk to you. But the resources that the school has through clubs and each club has connections with all their uh, former uh, members that are now working at different places who always come back and either do zoom meetings or come back and visit. So um, I definitely would recommend joining a club that you're interested in. I happen to join uh, business clubs, but there's clubs for almost anything you can imagine. There's thousands of clubs at um, Michigan. So definitely would recommend that. Awesome. And um, this will be our last prepared question before um, we go through the audience Q and a. So what is something that you wish you could go back and tell your junior or senior high schooler self about either the college process, about high school, or the transition to college? Um, I would say, I mean, I'm not sure if everyone is like this coming from high school, but I was like very concerned about what other people thought of where I was going because my grade in particular, I feel like just really excelled. And a lot of kids went to Ivy League schools and very selective small schools on the East Coast. And it felt super weird for me to be going to a public university in Colorado, like in the middle of the country that just hadn't really happened. Like no one from Berkeley Carroll had gone to Boulder in 10 years, I think prior to my admission. Um, and But then I got here and I was like, wow, like no one cares except like about where you go to school except for maybe a high school friend but they don't even care like once you get to college and you're here it's the environment it's so prideful of where you go um and so I think it's just really having confidence and going where you want to go not where you think maybe other people will be impressed if you go or like even if you get into a better school or statistically a better school but you like this school I think going really where you feel is right and where you feel you can be comfortable um, and keep a balanced lifestyle. I don't think it's necessary to push yourself to the point um, with academics where you can't really have a social life because I think going to college is about finding like a good balance between all of those things. And there's more to the university than just the school aspect of it. Yeah, I would say just don't expect a seamless transition. I know for me, the first semester in college was a little bit tougher than I was expecting. Um, and I think it has, you know, has to do with, you know, such large classes and, you know, just the structure of how all the exams were, you know, at Packer and some of these independent schools, you know, it's more so looking at how you're solving a question rather than the actual answer. And so then you go to college and, you know, you take your first exam for, um, one of these, you know, intro classes, and it's all, you know, 20 multiple choice questions. And it doesn't matter how you get to the answer. If it's wrong, it's wrong. If it's right, it's right. And I think that was probably the, the toughest thing I experienced maybe the first year. Um, and, you know, understanding that it's okay to, you know, take some time to adjust to the differences. Um, I know I was, there were a lot of times first semester and, and freshman year where I wasn't sure if I'd be able to stay in my major because it seemed like, you know, things weren't going, you know, right and it weren't, wasn't going as planned. Um, but I think it, it gets easier every semester by the time you're, you know, sophomore year and you're, you get past some of those intro classes and you're more so in some of the smaller, more, you know, major dedicated classes. Um, it does get a lot easier. Um, and, you know, just get, just pushing past the, you know, the first year um, and understanding that, you know, there will be some tough, tough, tough times. I think that's, one of the, the main things I would have uh, told my high school self before going into college.
I think I would tell myself to not stress out so much, which is obviously way easier said than done. But I think a lot of my senior year of high school and junior year, I was really, really nervous about the whole college process and about finding the right school, but also about just not really knowing where I was going. And I think that if I could go back, I would tell myself to like kind of savor that time where I didn't know um, and also to not be so worried about it not working out because it has worked out better than I could have ever imagined. And I know that if it doesn't, there's always the option to transfer schools or to like choose a new path. And I think that it's really important to like focus on like work hard, be like live a balanced lifestyle, but also like trust that you're going to end up in the right place and to choose the school that's right for you. And I also do want to highlight what Ruby said about a balanced lifestyle because it's so important. I think like part of what's made my experience so amazing at UCLA, the classes, I, I'm really enjoying them. I really like them, but it's also on the weekends, like my friends and I will go hiking or go to the beach and really like explore the city. And I think that that's such a, a crucial part of like the stage of my life. And also just life in general is about finding things that you love doing in addition to things that like you need to do. So I think find the place that feels right and the people that feel right and you'll be good to go. Sorry. Um, so I feel like by senior year of high school, I kind of forgot that it didn't just take like a day for me to find a best friend at school and like become best friends with them right away. Like it took time um, because I had been with these people for four years at that point. And I especially I feel like um, Alex and I's situation was very like unique to our school because we had such a small grade and it was during COVID and once we came back for senior year we all got just so much closer as a grade so like that kind of blurred high school for me and I thought that like I had these friends for like my entire life personally um so when I got to college I was like oh I'm gonna be best friends with someone like the first day I get there like I'm gonna have so many friends the second I get there because it's such a big school like I'll just meet people and we'll become friends and that didn't happen. And I was very stressed out about that. But I had to remind myself of the fact that making friends does take time. And there isn't as much pressure as you think to like become friends with someone so quickly at school. And I feel like that was a big thing for me last year was like, everyone had friends so quickly. And I felt like I didn't, even though I was just, I just had to wait for a closer connection. Um, so if I were to tell my high school self anything, it would be like, don't rush into anything and don't worry because you will end up making friends. It's you won't not have friends for all of college, especially if you go to such a big university. Yeah, if I were to go back, I definitely would have um, said to myself, like, stop looking at rankings of schools. None of that actually matters. Like when you get there. I was like set on Duke for a while and looking back, Duke's an amazing school and I would have loved it too. But I, I don't know why that was like what I was thinking just because when I visited Michigan, I loved it. And I knew there was, and then about halfway through the process, I, I knew that like, even though I considered a bunch of schools and wait till like the last minute to decide, there was no way I was not picking Michigan. Like Michigan was definitely the school I was picking. Um, and just not letting yourself like think, Oh, if you get into, a school that's better you gotta go like better is doesn't really mean anything because you actually have to go to the school and and do everything and live that life um and just there's better um there's so many different things you're looking to study and um like certain places have better programs um for different things so not just looking at rankings overall looking at what you want to do and if you know what you want to do later in life that can definitely help you and um yeah, just going back, I, I never, I really just don't know why that was my thinking. I think that I was thinking about um, too much of what other people thought. That's all really great advice. <laughs> um, Fenora, I know you have to go off to class soon, but will you tell us what class you're headed to and if there's anything else you wanted to add? Yeah, absolutely. So I actually, I do have a class very soon, Um, but it's a cluster. So this is like a specific um, class that's meant for freshmen at UCLA. And it's very interdisciplinary. So it's combining, mine is called Brain, Body, Mind, and Society. 
So it combines um, neuroscience, psychology, philosophy, comparative literature, and film, um, and also like disability studies into one class. So last quarter, we were learning a lot about kind of, the question was what is consciousness from like a neuroscientific perspective and also from a philosophical perspective. And then like the second half of last quarter, we were learning kind of about Shakespeare and like how mental illnesses are portrayed in Shakespeare. Um, and then this quarter is a lot about like specific mental disorders and like mental illnesses that are both medical and social socially constructed. So recently we've been learning a lot about schizophrenia and autism and um, like depression, anxiety, and also this like new area of study called MAD studies, which is controversial, but it's also really interesting to learn about. And so that's like kind of the second quarter and we're going to watch films, I think, for the second part of the second quarter. And then in the third quarter, it turns into a seminar that's only 20 people. And I think I'm going to take one about like creativity and like psychedelic drugs, I think is what my TA said he wanted to teach. And he said part of it was like going into a sensory deprivation tank and just kind of seeing like how creativity exists in like in at the same time as mental illnesses. And I think that it's really interesting. So I never expected to be in this class. I never expected to be interested in neuroscience, but I really, really like it. And it's been super useful. So that's in a few minutes. But that's thank you. awesome. Yeah. And Fenora, before we sign off, passing along a message from Carol and Middleton. Um, Ruby and Fenora, you're both so messed up, Berkeley. Carol, we're really proud of you. And it's so exciting to hear about your lives and your successes. So I just wanted to pass that along before you left. Oh my gosh. Thank you. That's so sweet. Tell her I say hi. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And have a good night, everyone. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Of course. Thank you. Awesome. So we have some questions um, from our audience members and some of y'all have already touched on some challenges, but um, one of the questions is what has been the biggest challenge, right? In the transition from high school to college or just going through college? I would say um, for me personally, this is kind of unique to me going to school, well, and Alex and Madison, I guess, but going to school um, further from New York, I see a lot of my friends who go to school on the East Coast going home for a weekend or like just being able to, if they're sick, they go home to their parents and just kind of relax for a weekend. And so I definitely do miss the... Um, closeness to home I really struggled with that my freshman year because I also was just constantly sick living in the dorms around so many people and I remember especially going to a public state school here where most of the people are from Colorado and so a lot of my friends who were in the same boat as me and they were sick in the dorms could go home to their parents which were like 40 minutes away and I just couldn't so I I struggled with that I struggled like thinking about how I'm in the middle of the country and I don't know anybody here. Um, that was kind of an adjustment, but I feel like as I've learned, like as I've grown closer to people and um, kind of familiarized myself with Colorado more, it's felt more of a home and I don't feel as far. Um, and I also realized I can go home for a weekend if I needed to, but you really don't need to do that unless it's for the breaks. The hardest thing for me was just managing everything at once when I got to campus. Like, you're, you are you want to make friends. Um, you want to have a good time. You want to, like, understand the campus, uh, know where all your classes are. But you also, like, right away, you got to apply to clubs. You got to, like, understand the, um, the learning environment, the different ways that you're, like, through bigger lectures, like, how to uh, prepare yourself um, for the rest of the semester. So just th getting everything thrown at me at once was like the first month or two was like challenging just to just like to um, manage everything. Um, but but now um, since I've been here for a year and a half, it's been a lot easier. Yeah, I think as others have mentioned, just, you know, finding balance the first semester, um, being able to you know go out, meet people, attend all the events that you want to also managing, you know, the coursework. Um, I think that's definitely was for me kind of the toughest thing. Um, and I know I already touched on kind of, you know, getting used to studying and getting used to kind of the different ways the, the classes are graded with the exams and everything. Um, 
but yeah, I think just finding balance, finding what what type of studying and how how to study what worked best for me, um, since it's a lot different from high school. Um, you know, finding where to access all the different academic resources like tutoring, finding out and you know coming up with the best questions that you can ask the uh, the TAs and the uh, the professors during office hours, since you know you do have limited time to to talk to them. Um, so it's just kind of as a whole you know, finding what works best for me in terms of studying, um, you know, trying to connect with people and go to events um, just, you know, as a whole. I feel like everyone's said it all, but it's just mainly the adjustment and like getting used to having to be more independent. And like as New Yorkers, I mean, we grew up learning how to be independent right away, but this is like a different type of independence. It's just when it comes to being academically independent, it feels very scary at first. Um, So it that definitely took a while for me to adjust to, especially because when I was in high school, I had such like a set schedule where I had school and then I had dance and I went to bed and school dance bed like every single day. And now it's more like, school travel dance club dance school you know very all over the place um and I forgot to mention homework is a big part of that adjustment too the amount that we get um but yeah just the adjustment from going to a very set schedule that you've been doing for pretty much your whole life to something very scattered was the most difficult part but it's also not too difficult to adjust to and once you do it becomes like second nature pretty much we have another question in the q a um, that's more about process so when did you start looking for colleges and applying and did you have any advice about you know college search and college applications Um, I started looking at colleges the summer before senior year. Um, that's when I started to visit a few colleges, um, even though I'd been on a few visits before that for my older brother. But just coming together with Frank and putting together like a preliminary list and talking through what I wanted and what I didn't want, I think that we were really on the same page. And uh, Frank made the made the process pretty easy for me, just like under he really understood what I wanted and helped me with my essays. Um, so by the end, by like three months, I think like by the end of the first semester of, um, of senior year, I was really like done. Like I, everything was submitted, everything was done. I was just waiting to hear back. Um, but I, I started working on my essays, uh, the last couple of weeks of, um, summer and the, and the first like two months of, um, senior year. Yeah, I remember I started going on college tours. I'm pretty sure my spring break of my junior year, just because it was like peak COVID and my parents didn't want to fly anywhere. And so we kind of just drove around the East Coast and they weren't official tours, but I was able to see the campuses um, and kind of get a head start on thinking about it. Although it didn't really, or at least I didn't really swing into action until um the end of the summer towards my senior year. Um, and that first semester is definitely a push to get all of your supplements in and your essays. And it's very chaotic, but once you submit everything and it's kind of just a waiting game, it's probably equally as stressful, but it's a big weight off your shoulders. Um, I think the first semester is the biggest time where everything is happening and you have to be really on top of deadlines. Yeah, I think it was the same for me. I think I started touring spring break of junior year um, and then started putting together all my materials probably during the summer going into senior year um, and then finished everything up that first semester of senior year and I think just for advice I think just keeping an open mind um, I guess when you're starting to look for colleges I know there were definitely places that I never thought about ever attending or you know even looking at um, and then actually going through the process of visiting and kind of looking through um, their programs and, you know, ended up liking it a lot more than I was expecting. Um, so I think, yeah, just keeping an open in mind and not eliminating a college right off the bat, just because of, I guess, preconceived, um, you know, opinions of it. Um, 
it's good to experience it, look through it a little bit more, um, and then have an opinion on it after that. Um, for me personally, junior year, um, or for Brooklyn Friends, they offered, or they had a class. I can't remember exactly what it was, but we had two different college counselors at the time, um, and they were just explaining what applying to college is like and like how uh, preparing us for senior year and starting the whole application process, which I found really helpful. And they helped us create like a potential list of what we we're interested in at that time and like matching our grades to like what our reach schools were, our target schools, all of that. So that was super helpful. Um, but honestly, like if I think about it junior year, I really didn't have the right ideas of what I wanted in a college um and I want to say that had to do with maturity I don't know how much I matured from end of junior year to beginning of senior year but just my ideas and everything changed the more I really researched and started applying and everything and I feel like my situation was a little more unique I personally um well first of all I had to audition for most of my schools because I did apply to most for dance but also I auditioned and applied to schools before visiting them and then once I got into those schools then I visited because me and my family thought it would be better to do that because if I had my heart set on a school after visiting and then possibly didn't get in I feel like it would hurt a lot so we tried limiting our visiting unless it was you know in New York New Jersey which was like one school for me because I knew I wanted to get away from the east coast for a little bit because I knew I'd be coming back right after college um but I really I mean I recommend what I did because it really helped me put into perspective what school I wanted to go to at the end like I was very set on like certain schools and then once I finally visited I was like oh this is the one like you know when you go to a place and you feel like you're at the right place and that's the school that you go to yeah awesome um we have another question kind of about about the application process so if you feel comfortable sharing um how many schools did you apply for and do you have any advice about the quantity and size of your college list Yeah, I think I'm definitely a unique situation where I kind of knew what I wanted and there weren't really a lot of schools that offered meteorology. So I think my final list was maybe six schools. Um, and I I think other than that, there really wasn't any rhyme or reason to, you know, why I'd picked them. Um, I usually just kind of went through rankings, went through kind of initial, um, you know, options in terms of size of school, location, and kind of just chose six. And I think in terms of meteorology, there is really not that many more programs that um, I could have applied to that had kind of a sizable enough department that I was interested in. Um, so I think for me, it was a fairly straightforward process and a lot easier than um, what of a lot of, of my other peers, you know, ended up going through. I think I applied to about um, 15 schools, which honestly like when I've talked to other people it seems like a smaller amount even though I felt like it was a lot um that's definitely all I could handle at the time considering how many supplemental essays and things like that there were but it felt like a right amount of schools for me to apply to because I definitely wanted options and definitely did not get into every single one um and I applied during I guess COVID end of COVID um and so there was testing is optional and I don't know how much that's changed now but that I took the SAT but I didn't submit my scores for every school um and I ended up going to Boulder which I submitted scores for and it worked out but I think you don't have to apply to as many schools as like some people apply like 30 schools and I mean they're keeping their options open for sure but um it I don't think it needs to be that many well, I'm one of the people that applied to almost 30 schools. Um, I applied to like 23 or 24 schools. And that's just because after um, 
submitting my first few. I didn't get into um, some of the schools I initially applied to. And then I got, I had COVID over winter break. And that was right before a lot of applications were ready to go out. And um, I was in my room and I was stressing because I wasn't into places that I wanted to be at that point. So I applied to like 10 more schools last second. Um, I never ended up going to any of those. I never really considered any of those schools. I just did it because I was stressed about it. Um, but I recommend building a solid list. Um, I remember during my college counselor meetings, we really went through like five schools. We definitely thought I would get into or most likely we get into and then like five um, schools that were targets and then five reaches. Um, so right away, we had around 15 schools. Um, I do recommend just because you never know. Like I hear all these stories from other people just not getting into schools, even though they had great, um, they had great stats just because it's very hard right now. And um, it's all such a random process. So I would give yourself as many options as you can. I also applied to a lot of schools. Um, and I applied to mainly state schools. So I felt like it made more sense because there are a bunch and they all seem to check a lot of boxes for me. Um, and I don't, it was a lot of work. I will say it was a lot of work, but I don't necessarily regret it because of how, like I explained my situation before, how I just applied. And then if I got in, then I would make my decision based off of those. So I really enjoyed the feeling of, at first, like, it was their ch choice and, like, their option to, like, take me or not. But then at the end, it was really up to me rather than, like, applying to a few schools and maybe only getting into, like, one possibly um, and then just having to go with that one. So I feel like for me, just being able to have the options at the end was great. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Alex, when you were sharing your story of the, I call it like the late December panic apply, I was like, no, like, <laughs> that's such a dark place to be in. But I appreciate you sharing that, you know, you like, in retrospect, right, like the schools that you added did not rise to the top of your list in your ultimate decision making. No, they were never going to. I just, I never was going to end up going to any of those schools. I just submitted the applications in case something didn't go my way and I'm like this is what you call your college counselor you're like Frank talk me off the ledge <laughs> you got a lot um, of emails we'll... over it. <laughs> we have a question in Q&A that just says um can you speak more about homework so I think Maddie you made a comment about just how you know homework that's a thing right or there's more than you used to have in high school like can y'all help us understand like what is the difference between high school homework and college homework and what should we know? I think um, in my experience, Berkeley Carroll homework was, I maybe just felt more open-ended, I guess. They really wanted to know like everything you thought about any certain subject. Um, and then when I came here, as I am in bigger classes and a lot of STEM classes, um, I've noticed I usually get like, we, I use a platform called Canvas. Um, it's kind of similar to Google Classroom, those kinds of platforms. And my, a lot of my homeworks, I like submit quizzes through it and it gets automatically created and there's no room for like, well, I was thinking this, but maybe also this. And there's like one clear answer. So that part is, I would say less pleasant because I just, there isn't as much room for like explanation or for questions and that kind of thing. Um, but Another thing is just like midterms and finals, like the homeworks are preparing you for midterms and finals. That's kind of what the semesters revolve around. And they tell you like your first day of class when your midterm is, when your final is, because that's how they're trying to structure the class, at least here. Um, so that's definitely more present in my brain than it was in high school because Berkeley Carroll finals were not just a simple standardized test. They were essays or art projects or stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, I feel like for me in high school, the teachers, we used 
did we I think we used Google Classroom in high school and it was very organized all the time like I knew where my homework was I knew when class times were it just felt very organized and very straightforward I also use Canvas at my school and some teachers are really good with organizing their Canvas and others are just really not um so in some classes the syllabus can be listed in the syllabus um tab and then other classes the syllabus could be listed in the modules tab so you have to really search and navigate for that so sometimes it's really hard to be organized yourself when you can't really figure out how the teacher is organizing their class within canvas um so adjusting to that was one of the hardest things for me for sure um but oh I was gonna say something else and I'm blinking um you can come back to me but that's the first thing I had to say yeah and I think it definitely depends on where you are in college you know once you get to your more major specific specific classes it's definitely though I feel like the homework was a lot more similar maybe to uh to high school where you know, the teacher will give you a problem set, you know, you'll show your work, you'll write everything out on a piece of paper or, you know, on your laptop or something like that, hand it in, and it won't be graded on whether the answer is correct or not, but, you know, how you went through the process of answering the question. Um, so I think once you get to junior, senior year, it does get a lot easier. Um, but I know, especially freshman year, um, there is some, you know, different software platforms that some of the teachers use that are pretty tough to get a you know handle on like I know for one of my physics classes you know you're you were expected to derive equations for homework and you're supposed to put the derived equation into a little answer box through the platform and if there was you know even the slightest thing off you missed a parenthesis or you missed um, you know apostrophe something anything um, you would get a zero on the the question. And if there were 10 questions, that's 10% of your homework grade um, that you lost just because you, you know, you missed out on, you know, one small mistake. Um, so I think just getting used to that and, you know, I think that was definitely a, a learning curve to start. Um, but once you're able to get through that, um, I think it does, it does get a lot easier. <clears throat> the way I was, I always think about it and like I tell my younger brothers, in each lecture, we go over like one full section. It feels like we go through like a chapter of um, like math. We go through like chapter one is Tuesday and then chapter two is um, Thursday. But in high school, it feels like a chapter is like a whole like section. It feels like it's a whole couple of weeks at least. Um, and you do a little quiz on it or something. So you just move, move a lot faster because um, like Ruby said, the syllabus is like in place from the start of the semester. And you're really like there's no there's no like movement for any of your assignments really like unless something major happens like your exam is here and it's not going to move like you're going to make your exam and, and we're going to lead everything up like for most of my classes we have every single assignment laid out for the entire semester like right away um and you can read that on the syllabus so it's more structured and yeah there's less room for uh being uh like for some personality in your homework assignments it's not graded uh by your teacher to be like wow this person had really good thoughts it's more like this person got the right answer this person got the wrong answer um which can be challenging at first but i think you learn a lot about uh how to be prepared for what people want from you and what people expect from you so you get you really get the expectations and and it's carried over to other things i've done um just to make sure everything you're doing is exactly how the person you're doing it for wants it And I remember we were chatting at the beginning, I think Fenora mentioned this about how um, a lot of public universities are on the quarter system, which just makes everything move much more quickly. Panelists, um, can you raise your hand if your school is on the quarter system or was on the quarter system? Okay, you're all in semesters, Never mind. Um, Ian, I have a question for you since you have graduated from college and you're in the real world. Can you talk a little bit about how like having the alumni network of a large public school has impacted your life now? Yeah, I think it's been really helpful, honestly. Um, maybe the first two years when I was working with the National Weather Service in DC, um, I feel like it wasn't as useful then just given that I had gotten that position through my internship. Um, and so I really didn't need to do much applying outside of, you know, doing a few interviews. 
Um, but when I had started looking for a job closer to home, um, I think, you know, having that alumni network was really useful given that my current job now, we have a very high amount of Penn State graduates that are in the office. I know one of the students that, you know, I went to, to Penn State with, you know, he was in my classes. We were together um, for a bunch of different projects. He's now my coworker. And so just having him to speak to, um, you know, talk to him while I'm going through the application process was really helpful. Um, and then just even when you're in, you know, getting into the office for the first time, it's really easy to, to make those connections and have something to talk about, you know, when, you know, 20% of the office went to Penn State, that's an easy thing to, you know, just start to bring up, you know, your first or second week there. Um, and I know just with the alumni network, I think I mentioned earlier too, I was in the, uh, the career development, um, you know, class my junior year. And just, I feel like with a lot of the public um, state public university alumni, you know, they're really proud of the, the schools that they went to, and they're really open to connecting with people who are in college um, to, you know, talk you through kind of what the experience is like outside of the college. And I think I've really noticed that with Penn State, especially when I was in school, just being able to message anyone that I had met with or who came to visit our class, you know, to grab a coffee, talk to them about kind of what their experience is like, you know, messaging on, messaging them on LinkedIn, um, having a phone call with them. Um, so I think that's one of the the real benefits of going to a state public school, just how large and vast the alumni network is um, and how willing they are to, you know, speak to you and meet with you whenever, you know, you want. I love that. Thank you. Um, we're going to end with a little lightning round. So we have three more questions um, and we're just going to do these quick. So um, how do you travel around or between campuses? Is there any advice on how to get from building to building? So what is your preferred method of transportation? I think um, I usually just my, walk. Oh yeah. Yeah, I do, uh, I walk a lot, but we do have a North Campus where a lot of the, the coding classes are. Um, so you can take a bus, there, there's buses. And if you know someone with a car, you have a car, you can drive, but it's really not necessary to have a car here. I walked. Um, we have an East Campus for the Environmental and Sustainability Building, which I happen to have a lot of classes in, so I had to take a bus, but I actually really enjoyed the bus. It reminded me of going to high school in New York, so I liked it. I also ma mainly walk. Um, I have friends who like to bike or scooter. Um, I have a car now because I have to travel um, to Milwaukee a lot, so sometimes if I'm running late, I take my car. It's not necessary, but it's helpful sometimes. But get your steps in. Um, do you recommend handwritten notes for classes or digital? I was definitely hand, I'm oh, sorry. I was definitely uh, handwritten notes. I think just because a lot of the STEM classes, you know, math and physics, you're writing out the equations and it's pretty hard to do that um, digitally. So I was usually just stuck with uh, written notes. Personally, I think that it depends on the class that you're in. Um, I feel like with like a more science or math based class, like definitely handwritten. But if it's history or English, I feel like uh, typing on the computer and taking notes through like Google Docs is helpful. Yeah, for all my classes, I, I do handwritten just because they're mostly math or uh, like, yeah, they're mostly math based. So I, I go with the uh, uh, handwritten. I write on an iPad, which is kind of handwritten, but then I can always find it from my computer, which is really nice. But I'm in a lot of STEM and math, and it's really useful to be able to draw out equations and graphs and all that. Love that. And last but not least, can you share a fun tradition that you've enjoyed um, in your time on campus? Tailgates every Saturday for football. Like, I don't think there's anything better in the world. and. I think I'll be coming back when I'm an alumni all the time because tailgates for football are just amazing here. Yeah, I would say the same. You know, I know Penn State and Michigan, big uh, big college football schools. I think we have about 110,000 usually at Beaver Stadium. So it's usually a pretty amazing event, especially the uh, the whiteout games. And, you know, they're playing at night. Everyone wears white. Um, so I think those were some of my favorite memories at Penn State. 
um, at my school at the football games. I'm not necessarily talking about the tailgates, but there's a tradition called jump around um, during the beginning or the end of the third quarter. So beginning of the fourth quarter at every single football game where the whole stadium jumps up and down to jump the song jump around. Um, and it's the boat. It's the craziest thing because like the lights go down and you just see everyone like hopping up and down. And it's the coolest thing ever. Um, yeah, I, I mean, the football games are really fun. We have a live mascot, a buffalo that runs every game, which is really fun. She's really cute. Um, but also, like, on the first snow day of the year, everyone goes up and goes snowboarding up at the range pretty close to us. So that's really fun and always a good time. I love that. That all sounds amazing. Um, there's a lot of thank yous in the chat. So panelists, thank you so much for being here with us tonight and sharing your experiences. Um, I really enjoyed hearing a little bit more about, you know, your college times, right? And what social life is like, what classes are like. So thank you so much. And to everyone in the audience, thanks for joining us. Hopefully this was helpful. Um, and if you're heading to one of these schools, here's some familiar faces you might see around campus. So have a good night, everyone. Thank you.